All right, welcome to Behind Sports. My name is Gregory Scott, and today we have Richard Thorpe with LLB Media Group, agency out in Los Angeles. Um, yes, LA. Absolutely. Can you can you tell us a little bit about uh, about the company and maybe give us a little bit of background on on you and how you got into the industry? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, so LLB Media Group, we're a sports marketing and PR agency. So we work with athletes, you know, entertainers, actors. Um, we work with them on branding and finding off the court or off the field opportunities um, that can help transition them into careers after they play their sport or after they do their primary jobs with acting. So um, actually we started maybe about four or five years ago. Um, I got started in it through, I, I used to intern for um, a record label in Atlanta. and uh, <laughs> You went across totally the country. Different, totally different field, but um, <laughs> I started working in music and I really love sports. So I kind of transitioned that into uh, working with a sports agency out in Atlanta at the time, you know, learn how to recruit, learn how to market, you know, um, learn how to put portfolios together for athletes. Um, ran into my business partner now in Atlanta, and um, we decided she was, you know, she was on the same path as far as PR. Okay. Decided to kind of put our company together or our talents together and start a company. And uh, we started that about four years ago, and here we are. That's <laughs> awesome. Now in LA, so. That's terrific. So you jumped, you went from Atlanta to, to LA to nice yeah. little, nice little jump cross country. Yeah. Um, S- staying we, in the yeah. entertainment industry though. I mean, sports and, and, and music, I can, I'm sure there are some parallels as far as the, the, the back end of it. Oh, absolutely. Um, with music, um, music and sports, you know, once you learn, you know, how to, you know, markets demographics and understand an audience and a customer, um, that's pretty much the core thing for marketing mm-hmm. between sports and athletes. Of course, they're the two different types of fans, but uh, you know you're pretty much trying to achieve the same thing. So uh, you know, once I learned that, you know, I kind of you know use that to apply it in sports. So. Good deal. So looking at your client list, it looks like you guys have a pretty diverse group of individuals. Um, lots of uh, Olympic athletes. You have some professional football players uh, playing up in Seattle. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you also have a couple ESPN anchors, is that right? Yeah. Yes. So who's who's your NFL client right now? Um, Russell Okung uh, okay. from the Seattle Seahawks. Um, he's a Pro Bowl lineman. Yeah. Uh, they had an amazing season last year, so they did. <laughs> they they have a lot of good things going on there. A couple guys named Russell that are doing some pretty good things in Seattle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, good deal. So when we're talking about marketing an Olympic athlete, and then marketing uh, you know, professional athlete that has a regular season, what kind of differences do you have? You know, what kind of challenges do you have or you know, different things that go into that? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you, well, I'll start with the Olympics. You know, okay. With the Olympics, you have such a finite time as far as you know, Olympics happen every four years, and then you have this short period of time to try to secure as many deals as possible for your right. client. Um, you know, and for us, our main goal is to kind of develop a long-term strategy for them okay. because, you know, if you try to do something that's short-term after the Olympics, you know, that next year, your clients never heard of again. Sure. So um, we try to develop opportunities for, you know, an Olympic athlete that can last over a long period of time. And with, a, with an NFL athlete, for example, a professional NFL athlete, they, they're on TV 17 weeks out of the year, you know, maybe even 20 weeks if, you know, if they're going to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So you have an opportunity to leverage those media opportunities and that media value into doing, you know, opportunities, branding, marketing for that client. So, um, you know, with the, like I said, with the Olympian, you know, you have to use a short period of time sure. when you get those deals in. So. And with the Olympians, because it's spaced out for so long, you don't know if there's going to be another opportunity of them competing again. I mean, there's so many things that can happen from now until Absolutely. then. So I like, guess you do leveraging the leveraging those opportunities, especially for an Olympic athlete. You know, is is probably a very high priority. Yeah, um, you know, sometimes you know, you know, with, with everything happening every four years, there may be an injury. Right. You know, there may be you know something happened with the sport. You know, or for example, you may have a sport that's not televised even after the Olympics. Sure. Sometimes Universal Sports may cover an event. They may not cover that, so your, your athlete pretty much is obscure. You know, after the Olympics, and now you're you're trying to find a way to put them back in the spotlight. Yeah, so. that's unbelievable. That's that's pretty cool. Um, so specifically, when you're working with the NFL, 
do you have any anything that you guys are, are really gearing towards when you're looking for endorsements um, for you know a defensive player up in Seattle? What, what kind of opportunities do you guys look for? Well, um, it depends on the market, obviously, sure. um, you know, and the athlete. Um, but I'll use Russell for example, since we're using him. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing we do is we try to identify partners that the NFL already has. Okay, um, that would be a good fit for Russell. Um, right now, Russell is, you know, he's he's going for the professional, you know, the business route. Um, he's trying to invest, you know, he's trying to be an entrepreneur. So, um, you know, with with him being in Seattle, there are a lot of tech companies and a lot of, you know, other businesses that are right there that, you know, we try to set up, you know, maybe speaking engagements, you know, right. for outing opportunities. Um, even now, we're developing, um, you know, an opportunity with Russell now where, he can set up an internship program um, with local schools, you know, around the area. Right. And come and visit different companies, you know, and learn about, you know, different businesses, learn different job positions, you know, really learn how to be a professional. That's something that Russell really wants to do. So that's um, great. He, yeah. So it, it's really it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear about, you know, when a professional athlete takes a vested interest in the in the surrounding community and really tries to use you know use his platform as um as something good especially when you know trying to get students into uh, different business opportunities that's that's good to hear Absolutely. good deal so also when you're looking for marketing endorsements i mean when you're when you're talking about an olympic athlete uh, we know the window there is is what it is when you're talking about an on-air personality uh stan verrett <laughs> uh, is one of your clients right yeah. um <laughs> And Neil Everett is the other ESPN anchor. What kind yeah. of opportunities do you guys look for them? Um, well, you know, it, it depends on, like I said, what they like. So, for sure. example, Stan loves the golf. Okay. So, for Stan, you know, we try to find, you know, opportunities for Stan to host golfing events or, you know, you know, meet up with a corporate executive to go golfing with, you know, and teach them how to golf, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, and for example, with Neil Everett, Neil Everett's from Hawaii, so he's very relaxed. I didn't very know that. Cool. He's very chill. Yeah. So, um, but the thing with Neil is, you know, every day on Sports Center, he has a line that says "Bartender Jack." So, you know, we try to use that opportunity right there to, you know, go after you know liquor companies or uh, okay. you know spirit companies that can make you know make sense with Neil. So. Um, you know, with them being professionals, we try to make sure that everything aligns with the image. You know, we have to make sure we work with ESPN, you mm -hmm. know, on certain things and make sure it doesn't conflict. And then also, we have to work with Neil and Stan's agents as well. Got it. To make sure that, you know, we don't conflict with any deals that they may have on the table as well. So, um, Lots of communication between lots of parties. Oh, yeah. And everything needs to be in line, right? Yeah, same thing with the NFL guys we have too. Yep. Uh, with Russell, you know, we have to work with his agent, you know. Um, so we make sure that you know we streamline everything and make sure everything's in communication with everybody. So. Now, do you see when you're working with these agents? Uh, do a lot of the agencies, or the NFL agent, the, the athlete representation, do they have their own PR firms a lot of the time, or do you guys work with you know quite a you know quite a bit of uh, different agents? <laughs> um, we work with uh, quite a bit of agents, but um, we we've, we've tried to keep it as simple as work with agents that we have relationships with. Sure. Um, because we are a marketing agency and right. sometimes they do do that. So um, we try to, we most times try to make it a white label service. Gotcha. So, you know, use us as somebody that, you know, we can reach out on behalf of, you know, your clients, find the right opportunities, you know, really tailor the opportunities for that particular client you may be looking for versus just pitching an entire roster yeah. and trying to find something that sticks So. Good deal. So the 2014 Winter Games are coming up. Do you guys have any clients that are going to be uh, participating? Yes. Um, Jasmine Finlay, the USA bobsledding. Okay. Um, very unique sport yeah. to participate in. You got, you got to be a little crazy to be on that bobsled team, I think. <laughs> Those guys are going pretty fast. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she, she's um, actually an Olympic hopeful. Awesome. Uh, so her trials are coming up in October. So, um Right now, we're just preparing her, you know, getting everything together to make sure that um, she's ready when the time comes for Olympics and when it's time for, you know, us to court sponsors. So, Okay. Can you talk to me about a little bit about that preparation for her? Uh, do, you guys, do you guys go through, like, a checklist of things for her? I mean, do you get her ready to, to deal with the media, um, you know, different things like that? 
Absolutely. Um, what we do with all of our clients, especially Olympians, when we, mm-hmm. you know, when we sign with them, is we sit them down, we have a meeting with them, and we discuss, you know, what are their goals, their career goals, their professional goals, you know, what are they looking for, for, you know, outside opportunities, you know, out of their sport. And then we sit with them and we plan out, you know, the next two years, you know, the year with the Olympics and the year after the Olympics and kind of give them a roadmap on what we're trying to do. Okay. And then we also find out, you know, what brands do they like, you know, what TV shows do they like, what, you know, what foods do they like. And then we put that list together and now we have kind of an idea of who that client is. And then we go to that specific sponsors, you know, that will match their you know, qualities and go after that. So, Good. So. The, the process of actually going to a company. So you find a good fit, you know, Gatorade's a good fit or, or whomever. You, and then what's the process of actually going and speaking with them? Are you talking with their brand ambassadors of the, of the you know, of their actual company that deals with you guys? Um, you know, or is there a, a large chain in order to get to that? <laughs> um, it depends. Um, some brands that, you know, you work with, you may end up talking directly to their, you know, chief marketing officer or vice president of sales directly. But then you have companies like your Parker & Gamble's and, sure. you know, your Coca-Cola's. Well, actually, Coke has their own, you know, their own in-house. But Parker & Gamble uses an outside agency to okay. deal with the talent negotiations. So it's more so just knowing who to talk to sure. for different brands. And then, you know, learning your ways in and out. Because sometimes you can reach out to a company and you get passed down to one person. You get passed down to another person. You get passed down to one agency. Yep, I, I can imagine. I can so. absolutely imagine. <laughs> so, you know. well, great. That's 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 good stuff. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind, a little rapid fire. Sure. Um, so we'd like to ask everybody on the show about their their career and and find out kind of what the most unique experience or outlandish moment you've had in your professional <laughs> career. Okay. Um, most outlandish experience for me. Um, I've actually had two, but this okay. one is most recent, I guess. All right. Um. The New Orleans Super Bowl, uh, yeah. we just had this this past year. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to an event with a client, um, an Olympian. He's a long jumper, okay, and um, he's a big fan of Jay Z. Okay. So, um, as you can imagine, how hard it is to get to Jay Z. I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, we actually um, decided to go to an event early, and um, you know, Jay Z's talking to a group of people, you know, to his, you know, his friends, and uh, I tried to find the the best way to get to him, so I lean over the, the security ropes and yell Jay Z's name. <laughs> he looks at me and he gives me like a long stare, and then he comes over and you know, and he talks to my client. And for that brief period of time, I thought I was going to get thrown out the event. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> like funny. nobody calls him like that, you know. He yells at his name like that, so um, you know, for me that was kind of like whoa, you know, that was that was different, so. Hey, you got the intro, right? It worked. Yeah, so at all costs. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Um, cool. So obviously you're a big sports fan. You wouldn't be in the industry if you weren't. You know, what's, your, what's, your, what's your most favorite sports memory that you've had, um, you know, growing up or, or out in L.A., Atlanta, wherever? L.A. Yeah. Um, I have a real close friend of mine that um, played basketball in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually got drafted by the Lakers in 2011, I believe. And um, I went to his uh, the first game. He actually played more than 20 minutes, and he scored 15 points. And that was the first time I actually got to watch him play live for a professional team. That's awesome. And um, after the game, I got a chance to meet Kobe, and um, you know, downstairs in, in their room, so on the locker room. So it was kind of cool. That, that is cool. That's good timing going to that and him getting all those minutes yeah. and actually playing. That's great. That's real cool. Yeah, because growing up I was a Kobe fan, but now you know it's you know I'm still a Kobe fan, but definitely have to keep it professional stuff. So. Absolutely, you got to draw <laughs> that fine line between fandom and professionalism, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good deal. Um, being in the sports industry, you know, we have a lot of students who actually watch the show as well. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is either looking to break in or who's just in and maybe starting at a ground level somewhere? Um, the biggest thing I would say, honestly, um, for somebody who, you know, is not in or trying to break in um, is research. That, okay. That's the most important thing that you know, I've used to get by, you know, get through some of the toughest moments I've had. 
Um, it's researching, you know, trends, researching upcoming opportunities, researching, you know, if you like, for example, if you're working in marketing, you know, you're researching different company financials, you're researching, you know, the different launches they've ha- they have coming up mm-hmm. you know, that can make sense for, you know, the client you represent or the brand that you're working with, you know, you research different markets that may be an opportunity for them. So, um, you know, researching for me has been the most important thing for me as far as, you know, what I've done, uh, you know, where I am now. So Good deal. The schooling doesn't stop. You need to keep studying, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Never, never, ever stop studying or researching, you know, the field you're in or related fields that you know, that, that's related to your, your industry. So. Great. Well, that's awesome. Hey, Richard, I really appreciate you taking the time and, and speaking with us and, and giving us a little bit of insight on, on your company. Um, we're going to link up everything in the show notes so everybody can get to your site and check out your, uh, your clients and what you guys are doing. So uh, thanks again for, for joining with us, and uh, you know, we'll talk to you soon again, hopefully. Thank you for having me. I love the show. Um, can't wait to see it. So Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Gregory Scott. This is Behind Sports, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.